Hey guys and gals, and Eric here from Drake Wing Gaming. And so you me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you with a Let's Play episode of What It Feels Like. So y'all, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now up for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel, get some awesome awards like permanent access to our community Discord server, and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm January up, and let's go. Alright, so I was wondering... If you think you're ready now, you know, for us to be together? I bury my face in his chest, clutching onto the fur of his body. This isn't the first time I've asked him this, so the question comes out easier than it did the first few times. Still, silence is deafening, and all too loud at the same time. Milo. When he finally talks, I know what the answer is before he even says it just by the way he sighs my name. And it crushes me. You know I'm not really ready for that, to be, you know, public. Couldn't we be together in secret? My voice comes out desperate, pleading in the way that I hate to hear myself, but at this point I don't really care. I don't think that's a good idea either. Is it really that bad? No, not what I meant. So why? Why don't you, why don't you even want to look at me when we're in public? I pull away from his embrace, feeling an anger start to bubble inside me. What? I do look at you. Today, when I was at the basketball court, I waved at you, but you completely ignored me. I just don't want the guys to think we're a thing. What are we then, Jacob? What is this? Listen, I like you, Milo. I, I really like you, and I like hanging out with you. But I can't be your boyfriend right now. I'm just not in that headspace, you know? To be with someone like that. It isn't because of you, I just don't think I'm ready, that's all. The giddiness I once had is I once had is nowhere to be found now, leaving behind an empty, depressing numbness in its place. Every time I ask, it always it's always a no, because he's too busy, because he doesn't want to come out yet, or because he just can't. And every time I always answer the same thing. Yeah, I understand. The truth is I don't I don't understand. Or maybe I don't want to understand. Maybe I'm too hurt to try to empathize with him in these moments. Come on, don't be like that, Milo. He grabs me again and pulls me in his warm body pressing against mine. I like you, okay? Maybe one day in the future I will be ready. Just give me some time. Time. How vague. That could mean anything from minutes to years. I think Jacob's probably closer to the latter. We're here now, right? That's all that matters. He pulls, he pulls me off of him and kisses me, and I close my eyes when he does. The blur that accompanies our sexual encounters is much, much more prevalent tonight. I can feel him touching me, undressing me, kissing me in places no one has ever even looked at. I feel him put himself inside me, and I hear his grunts and moans when he starts to move, the rhythmic sound of his thrusts echoing in the room. Back now. Water time. Hmm. I feel the pleasure course through me from the base of my tail to the tip of my cock. But I'm not here. Tonight, the words of that cheetah swirl inside my head over and over and over again. Don't think, don't you think it's about time we did, we changed something? It's soon over. A sweaty, panting Jacob laid next to me on the bed, brushing the fur on my arm. It's sweet, soothing, and it almost lulls me to sleep, but I know better. I know it's just a matter of time before he'll tell me to go, before he locks the door behind me and I have to go home alone. I know that when I go, when I fall asleep, I'll wake up in the morning hoping time goes by quicker and I can come see him again. I wake up every day wishing the day was over. And I don't know how much longer I can keep living like that. Hey. I think you should head home now. Good night. Good night, Jacob. See you tomorrow. He smiles at me and closes the door, locking it. Just like that, the night is over. The man is waiting for me downstairs. No one is going to take me home. It's just me and the singing of the crickets accompanying me. The walk home is empty. No one is out now. Everyone is asleep, preparing themselves for the next day. Only I am out in the streets of this neighborhood. Jacob's last words to me tonight repeat in my head. See you tomorrow. Because it's a given, isn't it? That I'll be here tomorrow. And that, just like every other night, I'll show up at his door as eager as ever to give myself to him. I hate change. People become so different, so un unrecognizable when they change. I wish people stayed the same, kept the status quo, never drifted apart. But if nothing ever changes, what is there to look forward to? 
How can I keep going for something to change? Hoping for something to change and never do anything about it. My hand moves on, moves on its own, taking my phone out of my pocket and looking through my texts. I have a couple of messages from Lizzie. Something about if I go home and if I got home safe and fake apologies for leaving me alone with Baxter. I ignore these. I open a text message from a number I don't have saved yet and I read the string of texts that follows. Hey, Russo, it's Bax. Remember me? <laughs> uh, this is my number, so save it and stuff. Also, feel free to slap me if you get too weird. If I get too weird again, lol, I can take a hit. Wink, wink. Anyway, yeah. Uh, see you tomorrow. Before I can stop myself, I press the number and hit the call button, putting the phone up to my ear. What am I doing? Thought crosses my mind as I walk faster, letting the phone ring on and on. Of course he wouldn't answer. It's past midnight. He wouldn't. Hello. I stop walking. Hey. Hey, Rosa, what's up? Pretty late for a chat. Is this a booty call? Hardly. How come you're up? Doing some studying for our project. Sounds of video game gunshots can be heard in the background, and he knows I can hear it. I'm taking a break. Right. So, you good? I'm in. In? Yeah, I'm in. Let's do it. By it, you mean the fake date thing, right? Yes, Baxter, as opposed to the other it. I can hear him smile at the other end of the line. All right, then. Let's do it. Let's show him who we are without him. He tells me we'll plan things out more tomorrow. We hang up the call. I continue to walk home. I look up at the night sky, stars being scarce, but the moon is as big and apparent as it's always been. And tonight, its crescent form holds the promise of something different. Tonight... It grins. I remember a time when sleep and I used to get along so well. The bed was my friend, my lover, and I was its willing concubine, eager to let my body succumb to its all-too-short night of bliss. These days, not so much. The time I spend to sleep is incredibly short to the point where I think the dark circles under my eyes are starting to become more, starting to become permanent. I sleep late and wake up early, such as the fate of someone who goes out in the middle of the night. But oh, the Thursdays I get to stay in bed for just a little while longer. These are the mornings that make me remember how things used to be and how much I miss the feeling of being wrapped in a warm blanket in a cold March morning. When my classes don't start until later on in the morning and I can lounge around, get a few extra hours of much needed sleep. I'm gonna kill myself. I angrily sit up and grab my phone, not even checking who's calling me and answer with the iciest tone I can muster in my groggy, sleepy state. What? Well, good morning to you too, sunshine. Baxter, it's seven in the morning. It's closer to eight right now, actually. What do you want? Yeah, I tell you, the hottest guy in school is outside your front door right now. What, who's? Baxter? Yes? What the hell are you doing outside my house? Ah, you knew it was just me from that description. <laughs> you must like me already. Baxter! All right, all right, calm down. I just thought we could go to class together. His tone becomes less joking and more shy and collected, and sort of eases my anger a bit. Sort of. I I don't have classes until 10, Baxter. Lucky me, then. I don't have classes until 9.30. Want to have breakfast with me in the meantime? My hand tightens around my phone as I feel my anger slowly melt away, which in turn makes me angrier. Weird paradox, but that seems to be the standard for being around Baxter. Always hot and cold. Are you seriously outside my house right now? Yeah, and I'm fucking freezing, so either tell me to get lost or get your bony little ass out of here. Ah, okay, fine, fine, give me ten minutes. Don't get me waiting too long. I glare at my phone as if it were his face when I hang up the call, and with a heavy sigh, I get up and start to get dressed. The smell of breakfast fills the air when I make my way downstairs, and I find my mom sitting on the couch when I reach her living room. Watching the morning news on her phone and eating a single piece of toast with avocado on it. How she can stomach eating an avocado, even eating an avocado every morning, I'll never figure out. Good morning. Morning. I look for my keys as I avoid looking her in the eye. I know the look she's giving me. It's always followed by a question, and just like clockwork, it doesn't take long for her to ask it. What are you doing up so early? Uh, nothing. I'm just uh, going to have some breakfast with the band. Technically not a full lie. Progress. Oh, does he invite her outside? 
He sits up and looks out the window that goes out to her front lawn, no doubt looking for Wyatt's car. No, we're meeting them at the restaurant. We? We, we got a new band member yesterday. Uh, he's in our college. I find my keys and quickly grab them and start making my way out of the door. Oh, you didn't tell me that. You didn't tell me that last night. Yeah, he's waiting for me outside. I'll tell you about it later, okay? You ever plan on staying for dinner? I stop as I'm about to open the front door. Something about the way she said it makes me makes it feel like she's actually upset about it. And for a moment, I feel bad that it's been so long since she and I had a moment together. I shake the feeling away. I've got too much going on right now. When things finally reach a point where I can say stay at night, I'll give her all the time in the world. For now, I need to stay focused. That's what Baxter's for, right? I will, soon. Things have just been a little hectic lately. Just don't bite off more than you can chew, okay? And you know you can always talk to me about anything, right? Yeah. Of course, Mom. His mom is wonderful! Good, then I'll see you tonight. Okay. Love you. Love you too, Mom. Walking out the door, I see him, looking straight up into the sky as he watches his breath fog up in the air. The sight of him, the sort of handsome cheetah leaning on his bike, waiting for me, makes my heart skip a beat and our situation finally starts to sink in. I'm about to start a relationship with Baxter Abernathy, and that's terrifying, as fake as it may be. You're crazy, you know that? He opens his eyes when he hears me get close to him, and he immediately lights up, standing straighter and flashing me that winning smile of his. Why? I mean, I do know, but why do you think so? You had zero clue on what my schedule was like, and yet you come to my house and pick me up in the hopes I'd answer the phone when you called? What can I say? I'm a very hopeful guy. Right. By the way, I looked it up when I got home. Turns out it isn't illegal to drive without a helmet, so we're good to go, Russo. Seriously? You think that'd be a safety hazard? Seriously, you think that'd be a safety hazard? Oh, it is. That's why you're wearing the helmet. I'm risking my life for you. What a gentleman. Anyways, I'm fucking starving. Get on already. He climbs on and hands me his helmet, and once I'm straddled behind him, I hesitantly grab onto his torso, unsure of where, his, unsure of where on his body to rest my hands on. Wow, I didn't even I didn't even have to ask you this time. You're warming up to me fast. Just shut up and drive, like a normal person this time. And for the record, my ass is not bony. He pats my thigh, sighing. You keep telling yourself that, Russo. He revs the engine, and before I know it, we're on the road, making our way out of the town. Making our way out the town. As for my request, Baxter does drive like a normal person, but even then we get to the cafe in a matter of minutes. I underestimated the speed of motorcycles, I guess. It's got a decent amount of people here, but we managed to find a table outside pretty quickly, and once we're settled in, he leans back on his chair, stretching his arms over his head. Order whatever you want. I'll treat you. Um, no offense, but do you have a job? Uh, do you even have a job to be able to throw your money around like that? I do, actually. Part-time at the supermarket on weekends. And they pay well. Not really, but a guy's gotta eat, right? Yeah. Make a mental note to pay him back when we leave the restaurant. Oh, there's something telling me he's a type for a few years of money. A waiter comes in and takes our orders, and after he leaves, in about a minute of awkward silence, Baxter leans on the table and stares, stares me down. So, how's this gonna work, Russo? There's an unfamiliar nervousness to him right to him now. I don't like how he was when he was auditioning, but that smile never leaves his face. His nerves pass on to me, though, and I wring my hands underneath the table. You tell me, it was your idea. True that, but I wanted to know what you think is our is our game plan. Think about this. Game plan? I guess it makes sense that we aren't just gonna jump into this without preparing ourselves for anything. What is the end goal of our fake relationship? Well, I'm not so sure. Something something make our crushes jealous, right? Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely Bronze Tier Patrons. Thank you all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our Silver Tier Patron, Cade Silvermoon. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. And if you all want to get your names in the credits, get access to our Not Safe for Work contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye